So let me ask you, I'm going to ask you more specific questions. A lot of times we hear APIs from some sides of the world and they talk about it like it's magic. Like, oh, we're just going to share the information through APIs. But it's not magic, right? First of all, you have to write those APIs and it's just like any other code. It has to be secure, has to be stable, has to be all those, all those wonderful things. So the APIs have to be written. You have to get the data into the form that can be delivered through the APIs is another thing. We're going to rely on our EMR to provide those APIs as a lot of people are. They're coming down with the fire APIs and whatnot. Okay. That's all well and good. We're now going to start having to share that with personal health apps. And that could be you and I in a garage. We just wrote yeah. an Android app and we're going to start collecting that information. So let's assume we are devious actors. We're not, but if we were devious actors, we would write in our T's and C's multiple ways for us to make money. One is, hey, as the patient, we're going to collect your information, move it into a personal health record, and we're going to bring your, your exercise data into a personal health record. And we're going to bring some other data into a personal health record. And you know what we're going to do for you? We're going to make your life easier. We're going to provide you an exercise regimen. We're going to remind you to take your medication. We're going to, all those things. We're going to do this amazing stuff through this app. But because we're entrepreneurs, we say, okay, how much is the consumer really going to pay us? Well, they're going to pay us $5 a month, $60. Well, we're going to have to get a lot of patients unless we figure out another way to make money. Another way to make money is there's okay. value in that data. And so in our T's and C's, we say, hey, we're going to help you with your health, but we also retain the right to use your data and sell your data and do whatever the heck we want to with your data. And that's buried in a 14-page T's and C's document that no one reads. They just click on because they look at what the benefit is and they go, we want that. All right. As a health system, is there anything we can do to, and I'll just tell you, I, I talked about this today on Today in Health IT, and what I'm proposing is that we should have a clearinghouse of some kind that reads the T's and C's, at a minimum, reads the T's and C's, identifies maybe some outliers of what people are doing, and we create notices for our patients. So they sign up for this app and they, they request the information. And as they're requesting the information, we just pop up a little message that says, hey, okay. just want to make you aware of the fact that the T's and C's from this application will share your information with this, this, and this. If you still approve, go ahead and click OK, and we will share your information. Is that kind of framework possible? We do that research. If you look at the state of New York with their HIE, it's completely opt-in. So what you're doing is you're putting together, and I agree with it, where the patient has the right to opt into those types of ventures or not. Totally agree with that. And Bill, here's kind of where the work that I'm doing currently with the ethical and responsible use of this type of data. Once you've anonymized it and you've made it so that there's no token attached to it, if I'm a researcher, if I'm pharma or doing genomic research, and I find something that previously was undetected. I now have no way to get it back to the patient. So I'd like to just put it out there. Yes, we're doing a lot of stuff with monetization of data. Yes, patients are approving of that. But are we putting the place guards in place that if we do make a discovery, that we can get that back to the provider and the patient? I know that's a little bit off topic, but folks aren't thinking that way, and they absolutely should. But going back to your example, yes, yes, we absolutely have to do that. And we're expected to. You know, if you look at our consents, there's a line in there that your data and or your specimens may be used for, you know, research purposes. And you can either opt in or opt out of that. So yeah, we have to give them total control. And Bill, I'll even take it a little bit further that we need to think about is um, allowing those patients to keep resident on the phone information that does not go any farther than their environment. So yes, they got the the app builder that's putting all this together and whatnot, but hey, I don't mind your exercise stuff coming on the phone, but my personal health record information is going to stay on here. And guess what? It's not going back to you or anybody else for that matter.